Okay, I'm in section 11.1, and it says uh, we're solving. Use the square root property to solve. Let me bring it over here. x squared equals 9. So I think you already know when you have a 2 power, and um, we, we want to make, make this into like regular x, right? How do we get rid of the 2 power? We square root it, huh? And whenever we put a root on, you have to put plus or minus on the side. I made a dorky saying, when you put a roof on the house, you've got to go up and down the ladder. So when you put a root, if you, you know, if you put a new roof on your house, you'd have to go up and down the ladder to get to the roof to put the new shingles on, come back down the ladder, you know. So if you put a root over both sides, like a roof on the house, you've got to go up and down. That's my dorky way of saying plus and minus up and down the ladder. So when you put a root on both sides, you've got to go up and down the ladder, plus and minus, and then that means root of 9 is 3. So the answers are plus and minus 3. And then it'll let you answer just like that, plus and minus 3. So now on number 2, let me bring it over here, x squared is 8. So same thing, Roof on the house, up and down the ladder. Rooting, cancel, squaring. Rooting and squaring, rooting and two powers, are the opposites. They cancel each other out. This is plus or minus 8. Now, with the root of 8, you remember how you simplify roots? Break it down 2 times 4, 2 times 2. So we have 2 twos inside sends 1 2 outside, and they're gone. So we get x is plus or minus 2, 1 2 on the outside, 1 2 on the inside. This 2 is left over on the inside. This two came to the outside, and the plus or minus is there. Okay, number three. X plus nine to the second power is four. <clears throat> what do we do? Same thing. When you got a two power, the opposite of it is a root. You put a root over this side, root over that side, plus or minus on on the side. The rooting and the two power cancel their opposites. So you get x plus 9 is plus or minus square root of 4. It's just 2, huh? So now, how do you finish getting x alone there? You subtract 9 from both sides. It's gone. So x equals... Now, those are two answers. It's plus 2 minus 9 and minus 2 minus 9, right? Two answers on the 2, plus 2 minus 9 and minus 2 minus 9. So just work those out. Plus 2 minus 9 is minus 7. Minus 2 minus 9 minus 11. Those are the two answers. Okay. Same thing on this one. Roof on the house, roof on the house, up and down the ladder, rooting cancels, squaring. So what do we get? 2x plus 3 equals plus or minus. Now what's the square root of 18? Break 18 down. 2 times 9. 9 is 3 times 3. The two threes on the inside Sends 1, 3 to the outside, and the other 2 stays in. So the root of 18 is 3 root 2. Now, how do we get x alone there? To get x alone, I'm going to jump the 3 to the other side. So it'll become 2x is negative 3 plus or minus 3 root 2, right? When that positive 3 jumps to the other side, it becomes negative 3. And now, final step to get x alone, divide by 2. And that 2 goes all the way across. That bar goes all the way because you're dividing the whole left side and the whole right side. And so there are your two answers. Okay, number 5. Bring it over here. x squared minus 17 equals 0. So we've got to solve for x. What are we going to do? We're going to jump the 17 to the other side becomes a positive 17, right? When things jump to the other side, the sign in front changes. And then on the next line, you know, whoops, you know what we're going to do to, uh, whenever we've got a root, I'm sorry, whenever we've got a two power, we put a root, put a root, and that's plus or minus. We put a roof on the house, up and down the ladder. Rooting cancels squaring. So x is plus or minus root 17. Those are the two answers. Okay, so now this one, put the roof on the house, goes over the left side, over the right side, including over that negative and the negative 9. The rooting cancels going up and down. The plus and minus goes outside the root. So what do we get? 5x minus 2, right? The root and this 2 power have canceled. 
equals plus or minus. Now, what does a negative in a root do? Kicks out an I, remember? Negative inside of a root is imaginary. It kicks out an I, and then the square root of 9 is 3. So that's a little weird way to write it. Why don't we just write it 3i? Okay, now what do we do to finish solving? Jump the 2 over. So we get 5x is plus or minus. In fact, why don't we just jump the 2 right to the front here? Right there. So 2 plus or minus. It's a positive 2, right? When the negative 2 jumps the other side, it's a positive 2. Last step, get x alone, divide by 5. I forgot the i here. There we go. 2 plus or minus 3i over 5. Okay, same thing down here. First thing is we jump the 20 over. So we get x plus 9 squared is negative 20. So negative 20, because the positive 20 jumps the other side, becomes negative. Roof on the house, up and down the ladder. So rooting cancels squaring. So then what do we get? Just normal x plus 9 is plus or minus. The negative inside the root comes out as an i. And square root of 20, that's 4 times 5. Square root of 4 is 2 root 5. Right? Because 20 is 2 times 2 times 5, right? 4 here is 2 times 2, and 2 twos in, sends 1 2 out. So plus or minus. 2 root 5, and the i came out because of the negative. Negative in a root sends an i out of the root. Last step, 2 solve for x, jump the 9 right there to the front. It becomes a negative 9, plus or minus i, 2 root 5. There we go. Okay, so here's number 8, and they tell us to solve by completing the square. What does that mean? Well, here's what it means. Step 1, you take the number next to x, the number next to x, over 2 squared, and you add, it's supposed to be an a there, add to both sides. So I take this number over on the side here, over 2 squared. I know this is probably totally a new thing for you. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Squared, 5 squared, 25. So you add 25 to this side and add 25 to that side. Add to both sides. So it's a special number called the completing number. You add it to both sides. Why? What's that going to do? Well, let's see. Bring it on down. We have x squared plus 10x plus 25. The other side, we have minus 9 plus 25. We've added the 25 to both sides. Notice now the left side, if you do the diamond on it and say what multiplies to be 25 and adds to be 10, I'm factoring this now, it's going to be 5 and 5, huh? x plus 5, x plus 5. And this other side is what? 16, 25 minus 9, 16. So what, okay? Uh, well, this is the same thing twice, so it's squared. Look at that. By adding that 25, we made it eventually factor as a 2 power, as a square. That's why that's called completing the square. When you give it that 25, which we found with this special routine, when you give it the 25, it makes it factor. It gives it just what it needs. It completes it so that it'll factor as a 2 power, a square. 2 power means square. Square means second power, right? Like cube is third power, square is second power. Now, why is that so great? Well, because now we know how to solve from here, don't we? Just put a root on it and a root on it. That'll cancel that 2 power up and down the ladder. So then x plus 5 is plus or minus square root of 16 is 4. Jump the 5 over. Negative 5 plus or minus 4. That's negative 5 plus 4. And negative 5 minus 4, which is negative 1 and negative 9. There's the two answers. Okay, same thing. They want us to solve by completing the square. So I'll jump this over. So step one, 
well, yeah, let's just jump that over. And so we get x squared plus 7x is positive 1, right, when that thing jumps to the other side. Now we got to find the completing number. So you take that 7 and you put it over 2 squared. See, that's what we always do. Now this time you can't divide 7 by 2. I mean, you need to get a decimal. We don't want to get a decimal. So you square the 7. 7 squared is 49. 2 squared is 4. Right, I just squared the 7. 7 squared is 49. 2 squared is 4. That's the completing number. Add that to both sides. You got to, Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other to keep the balance, right? Okay. So number, it's, so it's the uh, number next to x over 2 squared add to both sides. First, I moved over that negative 1, right? You, you want to create a blank for the completing number. So the number next to x over 2 squared add to both sides. Step 2, factor the left side as a square. And the number here will always be the number over 2. In other words, this left side is going to factor. How, how's it going to factor? The left side will... Oh, you don't have to think hard. It's always going to be this number. The number in the parentheses will be right there. Plus 7 halves. Plus 7 halves. Do you see that? Why? What's going on there? Well, do you see that if you multiplied these guys, if you multiplied 7 halves times 7 halves, you'd get 49 fourths, you'd get this. And if you added 7 halves plus 7 halves, what would you get when you add them? 14 halves, which is 7. See how they add to be that middle number? See how it's, it's true? That is the right factorization. It'll always work that way. That when you, whenever you add the add to both sides, the completing number, the left side will factor as that number over two, which is right here, that number that was in the parentheses. So that means then that that I don't need to write two of them. I can just say that squared equals. Now, what about the other side? That one, I'm going to have to write as four fourths plus 49 fourths, which is 53 fourths. Right? So now, how do you finish solving for x? Put the roof on the house, roof on the house. You know, we know it from here, right? Once we factored it as a square, we know how to solve it from here. Just put the roof on the house, up and down the ladder. The root cancels the 2 power. You get x plus 7 halves is plus or minus. Now, how do you root that fraction? <clears throat> put the root, the root's over the whole fraction, so put the root on the top and the root on the bottom. That's root of 53. The bottom, the bottom, the root of 4 is 2. Jump this 7 halves over. And there we go. We got x alone. Right when the 7 halves jumps over, it becomes a negative 7 halves. And there we go. We solved. Okay, so this one's going to be a little harder. So, um, so let me give the steps. Completing the square step 1. Divide by number in front of x squared or y squared. See this number here? This is the first time we've had a number in front of x squared or y squared. So if you have to divide, if you have a number in front of x squared or y squared, you've got to divide by it all the way across, even to the other side, getting rid of that number. We can't have a number in front there. So this is y squared minus 3y. And step 2, um, jump the last number, jump the third number to the
the other side. So this 3 halves, let me go over there, equals minus 3 halves. Oh, wait, wait, I should be more careful here. Make sure you see everything. What's 0 over 2? It's just 0, huh? Now we jump this over. That's step 2. So we get y squared minus 3 halves. We create a blank. So there we go. We did that. And here we did that. Now, step 3, we find the completing number. Number next to x or y or whatever over 2 squared add to both sides. That's squared there. Add to both sides. So i got to take this number, the number next to x or y, squared. So what does that square that? Positive 9 fourths. Notice the uh, completing number is always positive because even if it was negative at first, it's squared, so it always becomes positive. Add 9 fourths to both sides. Okay. Now, step four, the left factors. How does the left factor? X and then plus or minus the number in the middle over 2. What am I talking about? It'll factor as the number in the middle over 2, this number. Well, but now here's a better way to say it. It factors as this. The number in the parentheses becomes the number in the parentheses squared. So let me just say, let me just put it that way, number in parentheses, it's the number in the parentheses. Do you see that that's right? If I wrote two of those, let me just prove to you that that's really true. If I wrote two of those and foiled it, see this times this would multiply to go back to nine, positive nine fourths, wouldn't it? And negative three halves and negative three halves would add to be negative 6 halves or negative 3, they'd add to be that guy. It is the right factorization. It, the diamond would produce that, wouldn't it? And so it's right. That's how that left side factors. Right? That's This side is minus 3 halves minus 3 halves. And then what's on the other side? Other side, we need a common denominator. Multiply by 2 top and bottom. Get minus 6 fourths plus 9 fourths is 3 fourths, isn't it? So, y minus 3 halves squared equals 3 fourths. Okay, now what's the last step to uh, get it alone? Last step here, roof on the house, roof on the house, up and down the ladder, rooting cancel squaring. So y minus 3 halves is plus or minus square root of 3 on the top. And the bottom square root of 4 is just 2. See that? So there's no more root on the bottom. You see why the root is still on the top because you can't root 3. But on the bottom, we rooted the 4. It became 2. And there's no more root needed. So very last step is to jump this minus 3 halves over. Write the answer right here. So the final, final answer is y will be positive 3 halves, right? When that negative 3 halves jumps over, it becomes positive. Plus or minus square root of 3 over 2. Do you see that? There's the steps. So everybody see why this right here, when you add the completing number, becomes this? You see, because this squared, let me show that one more time. Let me erase this stuff on the side. I want you to really see that. That is the truth. That, right, if you took y minus 3 halves times y minus 3 halves, right, and you foiled it out, you'd get y squared minus 3 halves y minus 3 halves y plus 3 halves 3 halves. 9 fourths, and in the middle, that'd be minus 6 halves y, these two. 
So that would be y squared minus 3y, wouldn't it? 6 halves is 3. So you see that's the same as that. All right, we're done. Okay, so here we are again. What's our first step? Divide by number in front of y squared or x squared or whatever. So divide by that number in the front there. Cancel. So we can't have a number in front of x squared or y squared. Got to get rid of that. So that's y squared plus what? 2y minus 1. For 0 over anything is just 0. Step 2. Move third number to the other side. So here we divide it. Here we're going to move this over. So we'll get y squared plus 2y, and this will be positive 1 fifth. I want to create a blank. Now we're going to put in the uh, completing number. How do you do that? It's the number next to x or y divided by 2 squared add to both sides. So I'm going to take this number here, put it over here, over 2 squared. So what's that? 1 squared, which is 1. 1 squared is 1. So I add 1, and I add 1 to both sides. Now what does that do? That makes the left side factor. See, you know this factors, huh? How does, how does this left side factor? What, what two numbers multiply to be 1 and add to be 2? y plus 1 y plus 1, right? 1 and 1 add to be 2 and multiply to be 1. See how it always makes it when you add that completing number? It always does what? Let me be really clear on that. The left factors. This will happen every time. Every time you use that completing number, it'll make the left factor as what? x plus the number in parentheses square. See how the number in the parentheses ends up being right there? the number in the parenthesis, and then it's two of them, so I can just say squared. What about the other side? One, replace that with five-fifths, huh? So we can add them up, six-fifths, right? I just got a common denominator there. One is five-fifths, added to, you know, one-fifth and five-fifths. Five-fifths is the same as one, makes six-fifths. And so now, once you have a square, you know what to do. You put the roof on the house, up and down the ladder, rooting cancels squaring. So we get y plus 1 equals. Now, plus or minus, we can't, this, this is a root on the bottom. So we, we can't root the 6 or the 5, so we have to multiply top and bottom by root 5 because we have to get rid of the root from the bottom. That gives us root 30. Let me make that a little neater. 6 times 5 in the top is root 30. The bottom is root 25. Sorry, my pencil's not doing this very well. The bottom's root 25. And what is the root of 25? Plain 5, huh? Right? Two 5s in the root on the bottom make a plain 5 don't they? That gets rid of the root from the bottom. Last step, got to get y alone, jump this one over. So our final answer then, y will equal negative one, right? When that positive one jumps to the other side, it becomes negative one, plus or minus the square root of 30 over five. Okay, I'm going to jump to number 15 and finish up. Completing the square. Step one, divide by number in front of x squared. So divide through by two, like that. And so, x squared minus 2x plus 9 halves is zero. And move third number to the other side. So move that to the other side, creating a blank. 
becomes a negative 9 halves, right, when it moves over. And now you know step 3, the number next to x divided by 2 squared add to both sides. So I'll take this number next to x, including the sign, whatever sign's in front of it matters too, put that over 2 squared, which is negative 1 squared, which is positive 1. Add that to both sides, positive 1, positive 1. Add to both sides. Okay, so what does that make happen? The left factors, well, how's it factor? X, either plus or minus, the parenthesis number, right? What's the number, so it's going to be parenthesis, What's the number in the parentheses? Negative 1, so it's x minus 1. And you know that, huh? You know x minus 1, x minus 1 would become this, wouldn't it? Negative 1 times negative 1 would multiply to be positive 1, and they would add to be negative 2. It's right, isn't it? It does. Adding that completing number completes it, makes it factor as a square. Okay, what happens on the other side? On the other side, we have minus 9 halves plus 1, and 1 is 2 halves, right? So we can add those, and we get x minus, whoop, a little quick there for my pen. A little quick here. x minus 1 squared, and this side is minus 7 halves, minus 9 plus 2. Okay. Last step, almost the last, put the roof on the house. Roof over the left and right, plus or minus cancels. So that's x minus 1. What does that negative in the root do? Throws out an i, plus or minus i. And it's root 7 over root 2. We can't leave a root in the bottom. So we have to multiply top and bottom by root 2. So this becomes, I'm running out of room here, x minus 1 is plus or minus i root 14 over plane 2. I better move it over here. There's no room there. I'm going to slide it over here. So this is x minus 1 is plus or minus i, and then root 7 times root 2 is root 14 over root 2, root 2, plane 2. Last step, jump the 1 over, so x is 1, plus or minus i root 14 all over 2. We got x alone. There we go.